a locker room stabbing, a 30-year-old cold case, and a relentless serial killer who finally faced justice. These wrestlers' lives were never the same after the murder charges. The most recent case of an alleged murder in the professional wrestling world involves former WWE star Billy Jack Haynes, age 70, who was arrested in February 2024 and charged with murdering his wife. Haynes, real name William Albert Haynes Jr., was taken to the hospital for an unrelated issue after a two-hour standoff in Portland, Oregon that caused the entire neighborhood to have to shelter in place. When police were finally able to get into his home, they found Haynes' 85-year-old wife dead following an apparent shooting. Haynes was officially charged with second-degree murder and unlawful use of a weapon when he was released from the hospital. In the days that followed the death of Haynes' wife, WWE Hall of Famer Jake the Snake Roberts said on his podcast that he wasn't surprised by Haynes' arrest and said he'd never personally felt safe around Haynes. When I got in that wrestling ring, I was ready to kill somebody. When I got out of the wrestling ring, I was ready to kill somebody. Haynes retired from professional wrestling in 1996. In the 2000s, he helped spearhead the massive class action lawsuit against WWE regarding the company's failure to protect its stars from traumatic brain injuries. The case was dropped in 2016. One of the most infamous cases of alleged murder in the wrestling world occurred when Jimmy Snuka was charged in the 1983 death of his girlfriend, Nancy Argentino. The case had previously gone cold but was reopened following an investigation in 2014. Snuka was arrested in Pennsylvania in 2015 and charged with third-degree murder as well as involuntary manslaughter in Argentino's death. Snuka was sent to county jail and posted $100,000 bail. Argentino was found dead at a hotel on May 10, 1983 in Pennsylvania. Snuka was wrestling nearby, and when he returned, he allegedly found his girlfriend injured and struggling to breathe. Snuka called emergency services, but Argentino, who was just 23 years old, died within hours. Snuka told investigators that Argentino slipped and struck her head near a guardrail. When the case was reopened in 2014, the autopsy report revealed Argentino died of traumatic brain injuries sustained 12 to 24 hours before an ambulance was called. A coroner had also indicated signs of foul play. In 2015, Snuka pleaded not guilty and his competency to stand trial was questioned. His legal counsel argued that his condition, both physically and mentally, was worsening. In 2016, his attorney said Snuka was diagnosed with dementia and was a shell of a man due to his time in professional wrestling. Snuka was declared unfit to stand trial, and the charges against him were dismissed. Like Haynes, Snuka was also involved in the class action lawsuit against WWE regarding negligence over long-term neurological injuries. At that point, in July 2016, Snuka was represented by his wife. Snuka died in January 2017 at the age of 73 years old of a terminal illness. He had been in hospice care following a stomach cancer diagnosis in 2015. Brian McGee, who went by the name D.T. Porter during his wrestling career, was charged with first-degree murder in 2013. He was accused of stabbing his 25-year-old ex-girlfriend multiple times at her apartment complex. She was pronounced dead at the scene. On the night of the crime, McGee was said to be parked outside of the victim's home before he approached her, stabbed her to death, then fled the scene. He led officers on a brief chase before crashing into a guardrail in Tampa, Florida, which led to his hospitalization. McGee was charged with first-degree murder when he was released from the hospital. McGee's public defender requested bail but was denied by a Tampa judge. Jose Gonzalez, who wrestled under the name Invader No. 1, is infamous for his involvement in the stabbing death of fellow wrestler Bruiser Brody in a locker room in Puerto Rico in 1988. Dutch Mantel was there when it happened, and has said he sensed tension in the air that night when he followed Brody into the locker room. By his account, the stabbing happened when he was briefly out of the locker room, but he got the story from other wrestlers who were there. I mean, Invader called Brody into the locker shower area, and then they heard screaming, and then Brody coming out with blood on him. He then saw Gonzalez leave the shower area, walk around the injured Brody, and apparently go home to change his clothes. He also said it took 25 minutes for paramedics to arrive after the stabbing. Brody ultimately died from loss of blood in the hospital after two consecutive surgeries. Gonzalez ended up being acquitted of the charges brought against him in 1989 after a jury ruled he acted in self-defense. The knife used in the stabbing was never recovered. Mantel maintains that Gonzalez was only acquitted because no one was at the trial on behalf of Brody. 
Juana Barraza wrestled as a luchadora known as La Dama del Silencio, or the Lady of Silence, but ultimately went down in history with a different moniker, Mexico's first female serial killer. She was sentenced to a total of 759 years in prison after being convicted of murdering 16 elderly women in Mexico City beginning in the mid-1990s. She pretended to be a government nurse to get close to her victims, then would bludgeon or strangle the elderly women before robbing them. Barraza was caught in 2006 at 48 years old as she fled the home of a victim she had strangled with a stethoscope. Barraza went to trial in 2008. During what became known as the Mata Viejitas, or Little Old Lady Killer trial, she confessed to three other murders. Though she was convicted for the killing of 16 women, authorities estimate the number of victims could have been as high as 48. By the time the case was closed, there were still more than 30 unsolved deaths. In addition to being the subject of many other television shows across the world, the murders were most recently the subject of a Netflix documentary titled The Lady of Silence, The Mata Viejitas Murders, which debuted on the streaming service in July 2023.